Hello, everybody, and welcome to my roundup of game three of the World Championship match between Vichy Anand, the challenger. And what a day for Vichy Anand, having suffered a rather horrible loss in game two. He managed to bounce back immediately, beating Magnus Carlsen in convincing style, the first time he's done in a classical game for many, many years. And he did this in exactly the same fashion when he had to defend his title against Boris Gelfand. He lost a game, then he bounced back immediately, retained the title. So it's a big win for Vichy, big win for his confidence. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the game from the beginning for all of you lovely people out there who are interested in seeing exactly what happened. So, Vichy with white today, and he stuck to his guns and played d4. But uh, Magnus... Uh, was the first to deviate from game one, where he used the Grunfeld defence with pretty good success, got a very reasonable opening out of uh, right from the start. This time, though, he's played the move 2e6, which has actually been his staple opening uh, over the past few years, playing the Nimzo Indian a lot, or playing the Queen's Gambit declined systems, as we can see on the board at the moment. And after knight c3, again, we reach a, a, a crossroads where there are lots of different moves. The move bishop b4 has been featured in a lot of Carlsen games at high level. That's the Rogozin defence. But he played the more classical bishop e7 move, after which Vichy then replied with five bishop f4, which is really, at the moment, the uh, most popular move in the position at top level. The old lines involving bishop g5 are seen from time to time, but bishop f4, the other natural square to develop the bishop, has been seen a lot. And in fact, the tournament running simultaneously to the World Championship match, the uh, Petrosian Memorial, which I've been covering for Chess 24, featured a lot of bishop f4s. So what we're going to do is we're going to delve into a bit of opening theory, see what happened. Well, Castle's e3 is standard and knight bd7. This is what everybody's doing in this position. And here, white grabs space on the king side with c5. On the queen side, I should say, with c5. And it's here really where I suppose we reach an important moment in the game. Magnus actually plays the old main line, the move pawn to c6, just solidifying the structure. But what most players are doing certainly what players have been doing in the Petrosian Memorial recently, have been playing the move knight h5, taking advantage of the fact that the knight will win the bishop by force. And after bishop to d3 or bishop e2, variations like this and b6 like so have been seen somewhat. Um, this didn't happen in the game and clearly the difference between keeping the bishop on the board and not is quite substantial. So it was interesting to see Magnus play this. And, uh, well, Vichy now has an option. He can, if he likes. He can play the move h3, which would, after then knight h5, it would give this bishop a retreat square. It makes a lot of sense to do this, because this bishop does perform a very good job along this diagonal, stopping the e5 break, perhaps making this queen uh, a bit more passive, but he played bishop d3 instead. And now, uh, of course, Magnus has an opportunity to play knight h5, but I suppose the difference is that if you drop back, perhaps that this exchange, suddenly there might be some pressure down the h-file. Not clear, but certainly an option. So instead, Magnus played the other very uh, standard move in the position, b6, just looking to chip away at this big uh, pawn on c5. White protects it, and then Magnus continues in the same vein with a5. And again, Vichy very logically protects his chain. This is not new uh, material. This, this has all been seen before, and in fact, uh, Vichy demonstrated in this game how much better prepared he is in the opening than Magnus. In fact, in the press conference, Vichy went into some detail saying that he had looked at this particular position thanks to a game between Aronian and Adams from the Bilbao tournament. And he actually found an improvement um, on that game, which clearly Magnus did not study in as much depth or at all. 
So Magnus's big fault in this opening was that uh, in this game was his opening. He he admitted it himself. He he made a poor opening choice. Got a very passive position, and we'll see exactly what happened in a moment. And really didn't have a chance. So. Returning to the position, a3, and now you have to do something about this bishop on c8. It's traditionally the bad bishop in the position. It's locked in, and you need to get it out in order to coordinate your pieces. So black played bishop a6. But now, after the exchange, white plays a neat little idea. He plays the move b5. Hitting the rook, there is really only one move here, and that is to take the pawn off. And now c6 is his grand plan. And unfortunately for black, he's only really got one move, the move Carlsen played. Point is that this knight is really lacking squares, and if it goes back to b8, white can just push on with c7, and that wins a piece thanks to the pin. Uh, so black played queen c8, a cute little move, just pinning the pawn to the knight. But now white plays c7 anyway, and is threatening to take back on b5, and that would be an absolutely crushing position with equal material. Um, Black's task, he's so passive. The queen blockading the pawn. The queen is never a good blockader of pawns, as uh, my co-host uh, Jan Gustafsson rightly says. Uh, you want knights normally blockading pawns, but certainly not your most powerful piece. You want it active, not passive. So here after c7, um, Magnus played b4, but Vichy played knight b5 anyway. And again, uh, you know, black's got to be very careful around here. Um, a4. If he doesn't do that, white is going to play a4 himself and you know once he gets that in that knight is just an absolute beast on b5 can never be moved and um, I think that would be very very bad for black so here he had to play e4 to stop a4 from white and now Vichy continues along the same lines as Aronian by playing rook c1. This is still the very important game from Bilbao, Aronian versus Adams. And the game continues in the same vein. Black played knight e4. He has to try and get active. And also, this d6 square is very important. If white ever gets knight d6 in, for example, I don't know, let's say black were to pass, white played knight d6. You know, winning this pawn like this is also just absolutely terrible for black. So he went knight e4 to control d6, but now Vichy again plays Aronian's move, knight g5. What an excellent move that is. Looks mystifying, but the point is that if you take twice, white doesn't lose a piece because he now has a tactical shot knight d6. And after a queen move, you make a new queen and you win on the spot. So here um, was an important decision for Magnus. He played knight df6, which I actually think is the best move. You can take an after takes. So you're not obliged to take back. That said, the position is already looking quite tough. Uh, you've got to be worried about bishop e7, even bishop down to d8, just clogging things up even more. So knight df6 I can really empathize with. And then, of course, now he took. And again, here, an important moment. Maybe it was interesting for Magnus to take back on e4 with the pawn to vacate the d5 square for the knight. Um, and, for example, here, were black white to play knight d6? Well, you can take, take. And one of the ideas I came up with in the commentary live was to play the move b3, sacrificing the exchange. And the point is that if you take, I take back with the king. And let's say now you play queen d2 to try and play queen b4 check. I play knight d5. And as black, yes, I'm an exchange down, but I've got a very strong pass pawn here. The only thing I've got to be worried about is this pawn on c7. But if I can come round and collect it, a lot of the time this ending might even be 
well, it might be okay for black, it might even be better. So maybe that's an interesting idea, an interesting novelty in the position would certainly require further investigation. Anyway, Carlson played knight takes e4, and once again, Vichy follows uh, the line that Levon played against Mickey Adams with f3. And quite amazingly in this position, Black has got a, a resource which certainly no human player would ever consider, but he could theoretically play the move knight to c5. Just an incredible idea, giving up a whole piece. Because after takes takes, well, we can see here that yes, white would take this one back and black would take back. But for the sacrifice piece, actually, black gets these two monster pass pawns on the queen side. He reduces the pressure in his position, but for a human to play this is, well, it's almost unthinkable. If you've not researched this at home, the move barely comes to your, uh, to your head as an idea. So instead, Magnus very logically played the human move, rook to a5, kicking this knight. And now the big difference, now the improvement from Vichy, the move f takes e4. In the aforementioned Aronian game, queen e2 was played, but Mickey managed to hold on. So this is a definite bit of home preparation, a bit of work on this position from Vichy, and it paid off big time. Because after pawn takes knight, rook takes knight only move, you now take this pawn off on a4. Rook to a5, again, is the only move, and now you move the queen into c6. And the point is that now after pawn takes a3, uh, we reach a position where the, the major difference uh, in the position is the strength of these two pawns. And unfortunately for Magnus, this pawn on c7 is far more threatening than this pawn on a3. Not only is it further advanced, but it's, it's creating further passivity in the black position. So here after b takes e3, well, Vichy took on d5. It was mentioned in the press conference that perhaps e takes d5 was a better try uh, for Magnus, but I still think that white would have somewhat of an advantage after castling or maybe just taking on b6 straight away. But after rook takes d5 and queen takes b6, it started to become clear just how much of an advantage white has here. Black tried queen d7, castles rook c8, and once again, Vichy played an excellent move. He played the move rook c6. He, was, he said he was happy with this move, and rightly so. It's a good move. You, once more, you really strangle Black's position. You really make his position rather claustrophobic. Uh, the queen can't get active. The rook is now ready to come into the game. You're threatening queen b7 in a lot of positions. It's just super unpleasant to play for black. It's, it, suggesting moves is difficult, which it really explains Carlsen's next, g5. Looks like a wild attempt just to get some kind of play, but actually it, it was more of an indication to me that his position was so tough, he just needed to find a move. He was also running very short on time. Well, Vichy moved back, bishop g3. Bishop b5 might have been better, but bishop g3 is absolutely fine. And now bishop b4 by Carlsen. It's a, it, it's a decent attempt. Uh, the point is that, of course, you can't take the bishop because of queen takes rook. So here, Vichy once again played a fantastic move, rook a1. Just keeping an eye on this pawn and really uh, putting the, the, the ball back in uh, black's court. Uh, how is he going to respond to rook a1. Well, he played bishop a5, but already by now, not only was he so short of time, only had a few minutes to get to move 40, but his position was crumbling. Queen a6 was once more very accurate, and the point is that once you take, you now you find yourself in a terribly difficult pin. And one more very accurate move by Vichy, queen c4. He could have spoiled things with rook a c1, because that runs into rook a5. And then after queen c4, a2, suddenly black is the one with a lot of pressure. But queen c4 just nips all of that in the bud. And well, e5 already is a sign of desperation. Bishop takes e5, this pin is just deadly. He tried to sacrifice the exchange, but after queen e7, just e6, king f8, rook c1, and look at the domination on the c file. And Magnus uh, threw in the towel. 
So just a dominating performance by Vichy, one that we haven't seen from him against Magnus in a long, long time. That should give him a huge confidence boost and means that we're really in for a fantastic match. Current score, one and a half all, three games down, another nine to go, and uh, already a lot closer uh, this time round compared to last year. So Vichy fans out there will be ecstatic. Magnus fans perhaps a bit nervous. One thing's for sure, for all of us neutrals, we've got a great match on our hands. Hope you enjoyed it. Join me tomorrow for recap of game number four. Until then, have a great evening.